So what do you need really to get started with doing data visualization? Well, you need the following inputs for visualization, data and tasks. This is again from Tamara Munzner. There are three major types of data. So it's a, a, sort of a broad taxonomy of, of data with an angle towards visualization. One of these types are tables, like spreadsheets, where you have columns and rows. Columns are often called attributes, and rows are often called items. But usually I hear you know attributes and rows. So attributes are columns. Um, and then there's multi-dimensional tables, where it ends up being presented as a table, a spreadsheet, but it's actually the result of a multi-dimensional aggregation. For example, the data set we just looked at, population by um, religion and country, that I would consider a multi-dimensional table because they're aggregates over these categories. Um, country, you know, it's, it's people aggregated by country and religion to create this uh, multi-dimensional table or data cube is what these are often referred to as. And then there are networks and trees. Trees are really a subset of networks but can be handled uniquely. Uh, there's great layout algorithms for, for trees that don't apply to networks. And then there's spatial data, meaning data that can be embedded in some kind of space, namely plotted on a map. Those are the major broad categories of, of data sets. Tables, multi-dimensional tables, networks and trees, and spatial data. But pretty much all of these surface ultimately as tables, you know, spreadsheets or CSV files or JSON files, however it's represented. And to know how to best visualize a table, you can look at its attribute types according to the following taxonomy. Categorical, ordinal, and quantitative. This is going to be coming up over and over again. So categorical attributes or columns are, are attributes where the values are distinctly different from one another. But there's no natural ordering between them. Uh, for example, countries could be considered a categorical attribute. And then there's ordered attributes, uh, namely ordinal and quantitative. Ordinal means the values of that attribute are distinctly different from one another, but they have a natural ordering between them. For example, t-shirt sizes, small, medium, and large. You can say definitely that medium is larger than small, and large is smaller than, or large is larger than medium. And then there are quantitative attributes, namely attributes that have numbers. Ordinal data and categorical data are discrete, discretely different values. Whereas quantitative attributes have very specific values, uh, numbers. So let's do a little challenge. Uh, looking at this data set, let's go through and identify the types of attributes. So what type of attribute is country? Categorical, Categorical exactly. It's, they have distinctly different values, you know, China, India, United States, that have no natural ordering between them. And what about religion? What type of attribute is that? Categorical. Categorical, same thing, same thing. What about population? Quantitative. Quantitative, exactly. They're numbers, values, yeah. Now let's look at that other data set, the migrant deaths data set. So what type of attribute is cause of death? Categorical. Yeah, categorical. Again, categorical. They're distinctly different, no natural ordering. What about quarter? Ordinal. Yeah, ordinal. Exactly. Yep, the values are distinctly different from one another, but they're not continuous. And, and they do have a natural ordering. You can say for sure that, you know, the third quarter is after, comes after uh, the second quarter. 
Yeah. What about um, this one? Dead and missing. Quantitative. Quantitative. Exactly. It's a quantity. It's the count of people who who went dead or missing. Yeah. What about latitude, longitude? Spatial. Yeah, it's sort of a trick question because this one sort of ejects you out of that simplistic taxonomy because latitude, longitude have a very distinct interpretation on you can plot it on a map. And so it's sort of a, a non, like a, not a useful thing to categorize latitude, longitude in terms of quantitative. I mean, arguably they are quantitative, but the way that they can be interpreted has a very specific, you know, geospatial interpretation. And what about date? Same type of thing. Let's say ordinal. Ordinal. Yeah, date is a tricky one. Date is a tricky one. Because this looks like to me that it's aggregated by day. Although I think multiple events could happen in the same day. So yeah, time in general is, is a, another special case. Just like space is a special case, time is also a special case. Because if you have things that are a point in time, you can treat it like a quantitative attribute. As in, if it's like down to the millisecond or down to the second, if, if you treat it as a point in time, it, it's considered as uh, quantitative. But if you aggregate by, you know, by day, by week, by month, then when you go to visualize that aggregated thing, it makes sense to give it the treatment of an ordinal attribute or ordered attribute. Yeah, ordinal, ordinal attribute, like month Month of year, for example, would be considered, I would consider it an ordinal attribute. So in general, time and space are special cases that can be handled with specific visual interpretations. But a point in time can be treated differently than a region of time. Uh, and also a point in space can be given different treatment than a region of space. For example, a country would be a region of space. So, for example, a point in space would be, you know, my current location, latitude, longitude. You can argue that it's quantitative along latitude and longitude, but again, it has a unique interpretation. Then there's regions of space, geographic identifiers like countries, states, and counties. These, I would argue, are categorical, meaning you could make visualizations that are not maps that just treat that as a categorical attribute. And then a point in time, as in like right now, that can be treated as quantitative. For example, like the x-axis could be uh, time. But if you have an interval, like this year, next year, or you know, month of year, that can be treated as an ordinal attribute. And then a, a point in quantity, is a quantitative attribute, but there is a case of regions of quantity, meaning like when you create a histogram, for example, uh, where your bins could be like if it's an age attribute, 5 to 10 years old, 10 to 15 years old, 15 to 20 years old, this is an aggregation of a quantitative attribute, but that resulting aggregation can be treated as an ordinal attribute when you go to visualize it. This is the main broad taxonomy that we're going to be using. Categorical, ordinal, and quantitative attributes. The other input in addition to data for data visualization activities are tasks, uh, goals, or questions, or direction. You need direction. Without direction it's it's tough to do something meaningful and to find the motivation to really follow the project through. So, for example, what questions do you want to answer by looking at the visualization? What is the problem that you're trying to solve by introducing 
a visualization? What decisions are you trying to make, maybe with the aid of the visual visualization tool? What outcomes are you hoping for? Uh, what story do you want to tell? You know, if you have a narrative already, visualizations are really good at interjecting in different points of your narrative to to uh, tell the story more clearly, or you know, back it up with data. And also, what tasks should the viewer of the visualization be able to perform? These are all things that you should sort of have in your back pocket coming into a visualization project. That's all for Inputs for Visualization, Data and Tasks.